Graffiti is my life. It's made me who I am, it's shaped me. A lot of the experiences I've had whilst doing it and everything involved have, have made me who I am. And graffiti is going to be with me for the rest of my life. It was my first love and it'll probably be my last love, you know? And my inspirations come from everything around me, my environment, my, my experiences, um, every, every building I look at, every fucking shop I look at, every, every, every shelf in my house I look at, I get inspiration from angles and shapes and patterns and colours, designs and, 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 and that comes through in my graph. It might not appear so in my styles but I get my inspiration from everything. Well, it started off that I um, went out with a couple of pals and then uh, got to Watford to go and, go and, go and paint some trains. And uh, um, it was about three o'clock in the morning and we parked up, we parked up near the yard and uh, we had parked both cars. All of us had got out, the four of us. And then uh, the three of us just went for a slash down the road because we'd been driving around for ages. And um, Tom, went, Tom went up on the tracks to go and check out the trains. A car went past us a couple of times. And we thought oh, it's blatantly undercover. It went past again and we was like, fuck. And then it came past and just stopped and we was like, shit. And then I jumped out and said, what are you doing? Rah, rah, rah. We said, oh, we just just been cruising around, just stopping for a piss. And what? We're not doing anything illegal or anything wrong. I, all I had was my phone in my pocket. So I certainly wasn't going equipped to cause criminal damage. And um, then they, they, they wouldn't accept the fact that all four of us were so far away from home and late at night, etc. And didn't have, a, didn't have a reasonable excuse to be there. And, um, and eventually they, uh, they got the car keys from Will, so they knew that we were driving. Found a car, both of the cars parked just up the road. Opened Will's car, in the boot had my bag and Will's, Will's bag with paint and, paint and sh gloves and all that stuff and a camera, so it was pretty bait. Um, and so they arrested us for going to to cause criminal damage. And uh, they drove us, they all drove us, all four of us, in the, in the meat wagons to Hemel Hempstead Police Station. Booked us in there, and then uh, they had interviewed us. We, me and Will, didn't even ask for solicitors because we hadn't done anything wrong, so we didn't feel like we needed to even defend ourselves. And um, 21 hours later, so I saw the sun rise and sunset through that cell cell window. They then released us. There's no further action. The NFA did it because they had no proof that we'd done anything. And um, and ju it just happened by chance that we all gave the same stories. And um, then we got released, and they gave us all of our bags and all of our paint back. And um, then we drove to, we, got, we had to get the train from Hampton back to Watford. And then um, got, his, got, got into, all four of us got into Will's car and then full fuck him, we drove up to painted the train on the way home. <laughs> Anyway, um, finally, finally got home for the, the next morning and um, there was a warrant notice from BTP saying we've raided your property, blah, 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 and it was just silent, it was just dead, silent in the house. And I'm, I was just waiting for my mum to come screaming out of her bedroom down the stairs and hit me or throw something at me or whatever, and uh, she didn't. I sort of went upstairs to have a shower and then go to bed and, um, and she came out just upset and pretty shocked and depressed and it was uh, that was probably that was probably worse than our shouting. And um, it turned out that it was a complete coincidence that we uh, us getting arrested in, in Watford was nothing to do with us getting raided. It just happened to be the day, the night that BTP had decided they'd gathered enough evidence on us, they'd built a big enough case on us and they were coming to arrest us. They drove down from Victoria, down to Bumpkinville at stupid o'clock in the morning raided both of us we weren't even there so all of our paint gear all of my all of my clothes all of my paint all of my my, my coat and everything was all on me and camera and everything so they didn't get any of it all they got from my house was a few sketches that wasn't even mine it was other people's we're all all all, all on bail together uh, we, we all had bail conditions that we weren't allowed to see each other or be in contact with each other uh, we weren't allowed on trains weren't allowed uh, to carry any form of etching, materials, paint, pens, emulsion, even a pencil or a stone, you know, it was classed as uh, 
as as going to cause permanent damage, I guess. And um, if shit, as soon as soon as soon as we're on about a week or two, they brought us to court to then stick us on tag, and they stuck us on tag for a year and a half. <laughs> and, uh, and and I didn't think it would even be going on for that long, let alone on fucking tag for that long, just on bail. Um, and we we were, we were at first it was um, 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. or something. And a lot of a lot of kids, a lot of like little divs that get on tag for stuff it was like 7 till 7 for oh that's nothing being on tag from 10 o'clock at night um, but that was because painting trains was early hours in the morning it wasn't during the night time early hours but um, we appealed it and uh, managed to get the tag up to midnight <laughs> so we got an extra couple of hours out but even still I mean we couldn't even go out of our friends in, 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 in town as you'd know because like, as soon as the night got started I'd be running off home in case my tag got set off um, and it was like that for a long long time um, and whilst I was on bail I lost three jobs from them coming and raiding my mum's house uh, when I hadn't done anything wrong they came and made up reasons that uh, they said I'd done some graph down an alleyway near my house and it, firstly what the, the graph that was there was years old and it wasn't even mine so uh, they had clearly clearly been making up reasons If we didn't, if we didn't admit to uh, conspiring to paint those several trains on the plea bargain, they'd then fuck us for the whole lot, um, including stuff that we hadn't done. Uh, especially not conspiracy. I mean, at the end of the day, we were, we never, we never, we 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 we, we, we never sat down and plotted together to paint loads of trains and, and cause loads of damage and uh, tear up. We did none of that. We, we we just loved painting trains and loved doing our artwork where thousands of people a day saw it. And it was, and it was, it was usually spur of the moment, random. Right, like, let's go and paint a train tonight, or let's go and do this, and just hooked up with a couple of friends that we had met recently. And now, two years later, we are suddenly on trial, uh, Crown Court in in Southwark for conspiring to do all these trains and stuff, and they made it out to look a lot, a lot worse than it was. And um, in the end, um, I admitted six six trains, um, and they had CCTV and stuff, so it's bang to rights. Um, because no matter what we thought, or no matter what we could prove, the jury would look at the, all of the evidence that they presented, even though only some of it was sort of solid factual evidence. Um, so we knew that we would be a lot, a lot more screwed if we, if we just carried on with the non-guilty. And so we all signed plea bargains. We had them changed slightly to more appropriate ones. But um, then on the on the, on the day of the trial, I got the train up to London. I had a little bit of weed on me still, as I usually did, just because uh, I thought I'd leave home, have a spliff with a girlfriend and, and go home. And it would all be over and done with, or walk out with fine or community service and stuff. And um, we stood up in the docks, and um, it's, it, was, it was quite surreal, because all of a sudden they said, um, Thomas Collister, um, you're, you, 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 you've now got a custodial sentence of 30 months. And... Um, and everyone was just like, 30 months? What the fuck? That's two and a half years. Two and a half years for doing graffiti. And, um, and then, or he, he, he might have been last, but Tom's and Darren's were read out and, and, and they got less. They got uh, around 15 and 18 months together. Um, and, then I, and then we were all just blown away. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was such a fucked up feeling that I never thought I'd experience. You see it on TV and in films and shit. And a few, just a few graphers up in up in court with all of this, and um, and everyone's like the faces of their family and stuff were there. Were just like, what the fuck? And um, they sort of said their like, quick little, little goodbyes and then bowled down. And we all went down to the courts downstairs. And um, I still had my weed on me at that point. And um, I thought they were going to let me out because I wasn't being sentenced out of the docks to go in uh, to go and have some lunch with my girlfriend and stuff and be sentenced afterwards. And nope. I couldn't even hug my girlfriend or anything. I was straight down in the cells with all the others. And I was like, well, pff, what's this mean? That I'm definitely going to go down or what? Because the pre-sentence report basically said, um, in a lot more graphic detail, that I shouldn't be in prison. I shouldn't be going to prison. Um, not only uh, have, I, have, have, have I met my girlfriend since I was arrested and got a stable good thing going on with her, I've got an apprenticeship, which is a long-term career ahead of me, and I'm learning a trade. 
and um, and and my my dad had died just a couple of years before, so that was sort of maybe why I was in a bit of a state I was and had that rebellion side of me, whatever. And um, it was all positive and it was all good. So I thought, no, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be going down like this. Is telling them like it'd be stupid to send me down. And um, then I, I just happened to be in the cell with Will, who had just got 15 months. And um, and I was just sort of freaking out. I was thinking, no way, this cut, this cannot happen. And um, he was like, oh, give me that weed, give me that weed. He's like you're getting out, anyway. And I was just like, yeah, but uh, and like just split the little bud. And um, it was only like a, a, a big spliff. And I uh, gave him it, and he just ate it. <laughs> and uh, he just thought, well, fuck it, hopefully I'll be a little bit caned on the way to the jail. And um, eventually, uh, about an hour and a half passed, and, and lunch was over, and I, and I was called to go back upstairs to the docks. And my pre-sentence report had been done and read. And I was, I was, I was, I was fucking nervous, but I was still positive at that moment. I didn't think I was going down. I thought, well, those three have been sent down. Mine's hopefully my my case is a little bit better. Uh, got up in the docks and then had to stand up. I stood there and the judge suddenly read out um, with quite a, quite a mean look on his face. Um, I'm now giving you a 12-month custodial, custodial sentence and then a six-month custodial sentence for the other uh, charge, which is going to run concurrently, so it would just be a 12-month 12, 12 sentence. Um, and all of a sudden it was just... I'd never felt anything like it, and it was so surreal, and it just hit me, and I felt fucked for a second, and I looked over, and my my, my girlfriend was just completely blank-faced, didn't 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 know what had hit her either, and then my mum just looked like she was gonna cry, and it was so fucking sad, and I just just said over, I just said I love you, and um, and then uh, I couldn't even hug him or anything, it was just straight and straight and handcuffed straight downstairs. Got um, got in and um, Tom and Darren had been whisked away elsewhere, they weren't on the same bus as us. And we're driving right straight through central London, all the way through out to West London. And we passed a couple of couple of other courts on the way and picked up a few people from other courts. And then you just heard a couple of rude boys just like chatting away to each other, like from who had been picked up in different courts chatting to each other. And um, and I was just looking out, out the window just seeing everyone, it was a Friday night, it was so, I was just seeing everyone getting ready to go out and have run, have run and fun, people drinking and stuff on the streets and having, having a laugh and all dressed up and the sun was there, the sun was setting, I just remember the sun setting and me driving towards the sunset and then it getting darker and darker and um, eventually we got to, it was, it was, God knows what time, it was probably about 10 o'clock at night, we got to um, uh, high down. And I didn't know what I didn't even know where it was. And um, or you just see this big archway, this big gates that you drive in, and it was just that feeling of I'm like I'm all right. I mean I'm actually in prison now. I'm I'm fucking going to prison, and I'm not. Get, I don't even don't even know when I'm getting out. And I uh, bowled in, went to the I had to get out, get out a thing and wait in the reception room, which was where you wait to get processed and then before you get your gear and go to yourself. And uh, there was just about 25 guys in there. Most of them didn't even speak English. We was just chatting away to each other. And then there was uh, there was a, there was a couple, a couple of black dudes that got off the bus with us. And the first guy to ever say anything to me in prison. I was in my suit, obviously. I was all dressed smart, and everyone else there was just in their own own clothes and shit. I was the only one there in a the suit. And um, the guy the guy just said to me, he goes, he was, it turned out he was, he was on the bus with us there. He goes, if you've got anything on you, I'm fucking robbing you now. <laughs> and I was just, well, fucking hell, is that what it's going to be like now? <laughs>